I'm going to show you how to get started using your PicoDev Capacitive Touch Sensor and a Raspberry Pi single board computer. We'll connect these two together, run some example code, and then we'll remix that code so that we can change the way the Raspberry Pi behaves at the touch of a button. Let's do it. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi computer set up to run just like a desktop computer. Check out our Raspberry Pi for Beginners workshop for help with that. You'll need a PicoDev capacitive touch sensor and adapter for Raspberry Pi, and a PicoDev cable. 100 millimeters or longer is best for Raspberry Pi projects. Connect the adapter to your Pi, making sure that the Ethernet arrow is pointing towards the Ethernet connector on a Raspberry Pi 4. For Raspberry Pi 3, this will be the USB connector. Connect your PicoDev cable to one of the four PicoDev connectors on the adapter and connect the other end to your capacitive touch sensor. And I've just mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and stable for the rest of the tutorial. Power on your Pi, navigate to the article for this tutorial in your browser and find the download section. We need to download the example code for this tutorial. Right click the main.py link and select save link as. Save this somewhere that makes sense, like a PicoDev directory in your Pi's home directory. And I'm going to name mine touch.py just for some context. Open the file manager, navigate to where you save that file. Here it is, and double click to open in Thonny. And we'll just make sure we have the PicoDev package installed. Go to tools, manage packages, and search PicoDev with two eyes. Here it is. And just upgrade or install as necessary. Once you've got PicoDev installed, we are ready to run. You can press Control R or press the green run script button to begin running this example. And you can see in the shell immediately, we have the touchpad status and three digits to indicate the status of each of these touchpads. If I press touchpad one, that first digit turns to a one and you can see the blue line in the plot has shot up to one. I'll press two, there's that second digit turning to a one and we have the orange line. And then touchpad three, and there's the third digit turning to a one and the green line goes up. Now if I touch one and two, we can actually register simultaneous touch events. So the blue and orange lines have gone up. I'll release two, so the orange goes back down to zero and release one, so the blue goes back down to zero. And of course you'll see that in the shell as well. If you don't see this graph in the bottom right, you can go to view and enable the plotter. Let's take a look at the example script. We start by importing the capacitive touch module and we also import a sleep function to sleep in milliseconds. We initialize the touch sensor as touch sensor. And then in the infinite loop, we just call touch sensor.read. And that will read the status of each touchpad and store it in a dictionary, which we assign to status. Then in the print statement, we print a nice bit of meaningful text, touchpad status. And we concatenate onto that the status of the first touchpad, the status of the second touchpad, and the status of the third. And we have to convert those to strings to print them easily. And then there's a 100 millisecond delay. We have a few options setting up the touch sensor. When we initialize it, we can set the sensitivity and the touch mode. For example, if we want to reject multiple touch events, we can use the argument touch mode and set that equal to single. By default, we're in multi-touch mode, but this will reject multiple touches. Run the script and I'll touch pad one. And now if I touch any other pad, it's still only showing that pad one is touched. And if I slide my finger along, only one pad is active at a time. We can also change the sensitivity with the sensitivity argument. This can be a number between zero and seven with zero being the most sensitive and seven being the least sensitive. By default, it's three. But if I set this to six to make it very insensitive, that can be a good way to reject spurious touch events if you have a lot of noise around your circuit. Or if I set that to say one, then I can actually get it to trigger a touch event without actually touching the pad. I'm about, I don't know, five millimeters away. You might want to tune the sensitivity if you want to put a label over your touch sensor. This way you can put your own text or pictures on the touch sensor and give each button a new meaning. You might also want to tune the sensitivity if you intend to clip onto these ring terminals with some alligator clips so that you can clip them onto other objects and use those objects as touch sensors. Now, did you know you can execute operating system level commands from within your Python script using the OS module? Just in the interactive shell, I'll import OS, and then we'll call os.system, and this is the command we want to run. I'll just call ls with the 
l command. This is to list the files in the current working directory. When I execute that, we can see that ls returns pretty familiar text, which is a listing of the files in the directory. Here we have our touch.py file with all its permissions and metadata. And so that means that you can use a button to trigger OS level events in our script. We can import OS and in the while true loop, we can call if status, we'll just pick button one. If status one is equal to one, then os.system and we'll call a Linux command. Nice. Now when we run this script, every time I press button one, that command will be executed. And you can see that reflected in the shell. That same data is coming through every time I press the one button. I'll just hold it down. Now, of course, listing files by itself isn't particularly useful, but this is just representative. This could be any script that you've written yourself. You could trigger that script with the press of a button. That's pretty cool. Or you could keep things in Python and just branch your code by checking the status of the button as well. So there you have it. We've set up our PikaDev touch sensor and run a little hello world script to just detect different touch events. But as you've seen, we can also do much more complex things like execute OS commands and we can change the touch mode and sensitivity of our sensor. If you make something cool out of this starter project or if you just have some questions, then head over to the core electronics forums. We're full-time makers and here to help. Until next time, thanks for watching.